Welcome to Understand. In this video, we'll go over annotations and how you can incorporate this powerful tool into your workflow. Annotations are an easy and convenient way for Understand users to add documentation without making changes to the source code directly, yet still having access to it right in context with the code. Annotations make it easy to comment on a specific location in your source code or an individual entity, attach important documents, and even save whiteboard images. Keep in mind your annotations are saved with your project in the .und folder, so when you share your project with others, they'll be able to see any annotations you've made. Here I've got an example C++ project open. Let's go over a few of the interfaces before we discuss how to create and manage your annotations. If we go to the top level menu and select Annotation Viewer, this will bring up the Annotation Viewer dock. The Annotation Viewer shows all annotations associated with a file and any entities inside of it in sequential order. From here you can see each annotation includes the entity or location it's associated with in the top right, the author in the top left, the date it was created underneath the author, and the text and attachments for it. If you click on the associated entity, you can reassign the annotation to another that's within a related context. Clicking the annotation in the viewer will take you directly to the associated location or entity in the editor. If we go back up to the top level menu and we select Browse All Annotations, this will bring up the annotation browser. Here in the browser, you can find any annotation you may be looking for. They're conveniently organized by author, so if you wanted to say, find only the ones that you've written, you could find that here. They're also organized by date, by directory structure, if you wanted to find an exact file or directory, and by tag, which we'll look at a little bit further on. Let's close the annotation viewer. And another way to pull that up for a certain file is to go up to the top level menu and select the third option down, which will allow you to view the annotations for a given file. And the last option in the top level menu is to configure annotations. This will pull up an options interface for the annotations where you can change how they're opened, how they're displayed in the editor, and the color scheme for them. Press OK. OK, now that we're familiar with the browser and the viewer, let's go over how to create a new annotation for this function I want to add a comment on. There are several ways to do this. First, let's find the function. I'm going to go to the entity filter and search for it here. Double click it to bring it up in the editor. The first way to add an annotation is to right click the entity in the editor and select annotate. Here you'll see options to annotate the entity, the entity's parent, or the file itself. So let's annotate the entity. and clicking right outside of it in the viewer will save it. You can also add an annotation from the top level menu. So if we go up to annotations, annotate, you'll see the same options here. And we'll save it again. And then the third way to create an annotation is by hovering our cursor over the right edge of the editor and clicking the plus speech bubble. So we'll select a new entity here and over on the right side of the editor, you'll see a plus speech bubble and we can add an entity this way as well. Now, one extremely useful feature with annotations are the tags. To enter a tag, use the pound sign in the annotation text. To edit the text, I'll simply click inside of the text and I'll add a tag and click outside of it to save it. Now, if I wanna enter a literal non-tagging pound sign, I'll simply type a double pound. You may want to do this to reference a git issue number, for example. So here I'll add a literal pound to this annotation and click outside of it. Now if we go back to the annotations browser and expand the tags, we can see that under refactor, there are two different annotations and clicking them will pull them up, but you'll notice that this double pounded tag does not show up. You can use tags for whatever you want, but one of their most common uses is for organizing to-do lists or grouping types of changes that need to be made, such as the refactor tag I just made, or assigning work to a certain person. So let's say we have the entity, but we want to find the annotations for it. 
Another way we can find any annotations for a given entity is through the Information Browser. Also, be sure to check out our video on the Information Browser for more details on what you can do with that. So if we look at the Information Browser for default signature, clicking the Annotations dropdown will give you a list of the associated annotations. And if we close Annotations Viewer, and you click the icon in the Information Browser next to the Annotations dropdown, this will bring up the viewer. If you ever want to delete an annotation, simply select it in the viewer and click the minus button at the top. Be careful not to press the delete button on your keyboard as this will delete the highlighted entity in your editor, not the annotation. So if I select this annotation and I press delete, this deletes the entity in the editor. So I'll undo that. So what happens to the annotation if the entity it was linked to is deleted? Well, it's still there, it just doesn't belong to an entity anymore, so it won't show up in the inline annotations. These orphans can be viewed and linked again to another entity in the Manage Orphans top-level menu that appears when there are orphans in the project. So let's scroll down and find a function that I want to annotate. I'm going to add an annotation to Repository Notifier. Save it. Now let's say I end up deleting a large chunk of this file or this function. First I'll save it, then go to Project, Analyze Changed Files. Now if I go up to the top level menu, I should see Manage Orphans here. Click that. This will bring up an interface to manage your orphans. So on the left I can see all of the annotation orphans, and on the right, I can see a list of the entities that I can attach it to. So we'll select this, and let's say I want to attach it to the file instead. So we'll look for files. And we'll find the exact file. Looks like it's this one. Now if I click Attach Orphan to Entity, the annotation will show up attached to the file itself. This has been a short introduction to annotations. For more information on annotations or any other tool within Understand, visit support.scitools.com.